Hello Virtual Pilots, today we are going to go to the startup procedure for the Mi-24 Hind in this year's world. Produced by Mil Moskov Helicopter Plant, the Hind has been operated since 1972 by the Soviet Air Force and many other nations. This large helicopter performs at high speed, long range with high versatility and a large weapon loadout. It is controlled by a pilot and a weapons operator. Following the instructions available in the sim, we are going to go step by step in every procedure, highlighting the important switches you need to remember in order to bring this large helicopter gunship to life. Being the first helicopter we cover in the sim, please note the important axes and buttons you will need to bind in order to operate the following procedures. We will perform a cold and dark startup, we will taxi and execute a hover power check, and after that, we will continue with a rolling takeoff. So let's start! First, let's switch on all the circuit breakers, starting from the right back panel. We use the support metal frames to move all of them up. And then the left side breakers. Make sure you click properly so the metal frames move completely up. Good! Now let's turn both batteries on. And then we open the cover and switch power to battery to the up position. Next, we activate the power inverter. And we can close the door as things will get louder from now on. Let's pressurize the cockpit by turning the wheel handle counterclockwise with a mouse drag to the left down position. And same as the MI-8, we need to release the main rotor shaft brake located to the right hand side of our chair. Now we need to move the master switch and fire extinguisher to the up position. Then we go ahead and switch on the service tanks, cutoff valves, crossfeed and transfer pumps. If we had external fuel tanks, we will switch on the external tank as well. And now let's get ready to start the APU. First with making sure that the voltage doesn't drop below 18 volts. So let's rotate the voltmeter to the bat position. Now we check that the APU start crank is set to the start position, meaning down. And we press for 3 seconds the APU start button. You can always use the stopwatch to help you count the seconds. Now as the APU goes idle, we can see that the green APU normal RPM and oil pressure lamps are lit. So now we can start the main helicopter engines. Commencing with the left one, as the wind is blowing from the right direction today. So the engine side start is set to the left and we push the button for 3 seconds. After that, we immediately lower the left engine stop lever. I recommend mapping a button for it on your HOTAS. And the rotor starts to spin. It should take around 1 minute for the engine to reach idle power. And please keep in mind that during each engine startup, it is not allowed to move the aircraft control sticks or throttle and do not switch the engine start rocker to another engine. So that's a no-no and it's very good to know. Now it's safe to repeat the process with the right engine. So we select it and hit engine start. And of course, we lower the right engine stop lever. Whoops, that one. See, that's why I recommend binding a switch on your HOTAS and controller. Again, we wait one minute while monitoring RPM, temperature and oil pressure. Now the next step is to activate the dust filter. 
And then, prior to increase the throttle, we need to check that the oil temperature reaches plus 30 degrees and the main gearbox temperature is below 15 degrees. This is where you need to check and make sure you don't confuse them with the exhaust gas temperature shown over here. Now let's increase the RPM using the throttle. You can place the mouse cursor over the collective grip and click the right mouse button and rotate clockwise with the mouse wheel or using the page up key. I mapped one of my throttle axes to it, so let's increase it manually. Next we will engage the right and left generator. And turn power from battery switches back to off. We switch the main transformers on by setting them in the up position. And we switch up both rectifiers. Now after doing all of this, we need to stop the APU. It is done by pressing the same button we used to start it. Now we need to power up the guiding system, both vertical gyros. Then we test them using the two buttons on the left hand side. The red lights should go off. Next we set the adjustable stops to on. Note how the bar settles near the center according to the current air density. And now we engage the autopilot systems. They are located in the lower left side so we need to hide the chair in order to reach them properly. And there you go, yaw, roll and pitch. Good. We power all the radio communication systems. Followed by the radio altimeter, Doppler, Blink, radar warning power and IFF. Now after 3 minutes since the guiding system has been powered, we are ready to align it. The panel is on the bottom left hand side. It's a bit harder to reach and make sure you clearly press the correct button this one here and hold it for three seconds one two three okay let's also set the arc 15 panel mode to compass and next we power the arc u2 directional finder we get some air condition on and we should be almost ready for taxi but first Let's switch on some lights. The red lighting for the instrument panel. Even though at this time of day we won't notice them, you will like them in the evening and night operations. Speaking of which, I have a few surprises for you guys, so stay tuned. Okay, next should be on the left hand side over here. Taxi lights. I mapped the switch on the throttle as well. And it works. This is for the landing lights, which are now retracted. Nav lights from dim to bright. Okay. So now let's switch on the fan. There you go, looking good, it works. And I gotta say, I have a fan also here in the studio. Uh, it's very useful in VR. For those of you who know how sweaty you can get when you play DCS in VR. Now let's switch on the strobe light located on the tail. We keep the rotor lights off at this moment, we don't need them. And let's set the bright setting. Now for the cabin lights, let's make it blue in the cargo. And we keep them off here in the cockpit at this moment. Everything else is okay, let's continue. We switch on the sight. 
Now we can set it in position by clicking on this lever here and scrolling the mouse wheel for the desired angle. Here on the right hand side we have the map light, we can have it in dim, off or bright. We keep it on bright. And over here more red light on the left panels and the store slides and let's set the chair back on. And now we are ready for taxi. We will need to release the parking brake and prepare to move. Now the hind will start rolling as soon as we release the wheel brake. It is up to us to control the speed by pushing the cyclic stick forward or backwards. We have also a wheel brake, but I tend not to use it too often, only in case of emergency. I also recommend that you bind the parking brake on your joystick or HOTAS, and in real life it is located on the stick over here, and is released. Let's focus. You can have a fine control on your speed with the use of the cyclic stick. To steer, we are using the rudder pedals, more precise, the left pedal, as the helicopter has a tendency to steer to the right. You will need to press the left pedal in order to counter the steer. In order to pick up speed, I move the cyclic forward, and in order to maintain a steady motion, I move it backwards. Let's test the wheel brake. You see how rough it is? But it works. Now let's try to maneuver to the runway. You may find it slow, but it's safe and steady with a lot of respect for the bird and your surroundings. You should always taxi under 20 km per hour. We are approaching the runway. Looks clear on our right. Let's reduce our speed. You can come to a stop by just pulling back on the stick. So right is clear. Left is clear. Entering active runway. We will turn to our left and align on the center. Ok, so as we got our takeoff clearance, we can set our landing lights on. And we stop here. Parking brake on. Now prior to our departure, we need to execute a hover power check. We will pull the control stick back and a bit to the right. We will raise our collective and control the rudder to the right to compensate for the torque and tendency to pull to the left. Maybe it sounds complicated, but it's not. You want to raise the helicopter into a stable hover above the runway. It takes a bit of practice, but after a few tries, it can be mastered. So we pull the stick, we prepare the rudder, and smoothly raise the collective. Check it out. Ok, the helicopter tries to advance, pull more on the stick. There it is, we are in a stable hover. Now in case we want, we can trim the helicopter in this setting and we can move around in a steady fashion. But we will descend back on the runway and prepare for a rolling takeoff. Good, now let's focus. 
We need to move the cyclic forward in order to start a forward movement. We increase the collective smoothly until the helicopter becomes light on the landing gear. And we try to reach a speed between 20 and 30 km per hour, depending on our weight. And we apply more collective and pull the cyclic back in order to get the helicopter in the air. We will maintain a climbing attitude and retract the gear. Let's align a bit better. And stick forward. Increasing the collective. Speed check, slowly pulling the stick. Continuing raising the collective. And gear up. As we continue our climb, we can switch off the dust filters. And we trim our angle of attack in order to maintain speed and climb. And that's it. We perform a cold and dark startup, we taxied and learned how to execute a hover power check and we executed a rolling takeoff. Next we will continue our tutorial series for DCS World featuring old and new modules available now and in the future. Hope you find our video informative and be sure to give us a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm recommend our videos to more users along the way. And subscribe to be in touch with all the latest news from your favorite simulators and games. I'm Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe, and I'll see you next time.